Whoa! What an amazing show tonight! Hello, folks. Welcome back. Mm. Excuse me. I had some red wine pizza. I'm washing all that red wine pizza down with some so good cherry cola. Cool. Ah, so good with that stuff. I am the one, the only, as you can tell by my scruffiness. I am Hobo Tom. Um, and, and I am here to talk about some pro wrestling, meaning that was SmackDown. Wow. Did WWE ever learn their lesson from having such a terrible segment like Diva Karaoke? This show was, whoa, very, very good. Before I start off with my review, I have some thank yous to give. Shibuya River. You sort of earned that six count. Sasha Banks still looks like a mid-level hooker. And Nolo King! Whoa! You, sir, are on your way to becoming part of the Daytona Beach Bumfight League. For you, sir, are that infamous luchador on a forklift!
Let's see here. Now, too! You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. Israeli guy, you're there partying with your briefcase boombox. Let's see here. Shadow Warden, you can crawl out of here. I think those were in somewhat reference to the bar fight we saw. We'll get into that though. And then Rocket Soldier, the last one. You sir always win by dirty pin. Again, those are all the thank yous. If you would like your own personalized thank you, again, you can always find me, Hobo Tom, at Hobo and Girlfriend at gmail.com. Comment. Uh, find me in Discord somewhere. And subscribe. So with all that being said, let's talk about some SmackDown. Oh, my, my. Oh, hell yeah. Nikki Cross, she don't need no party dress. Wow, this was just a good. Sh this was, this was actually the best SmackDown I've seen in a while. AJ Styles brings so much to it. I don't know. Maybe Bruce Pritchard is finding his rhythm. He just had to get all those old. He just had to kind of dust off the old creative forces, kind of retweak that knee a little bit, and realize, hey. I can do better than Diva Karaoke. Cause they are part of me. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Uh, starts off with Bailey and Sasha Banks that come down. Whoa. I love the fact that the crowd says, you suck. Not in a good way either. Then Bailey almost wants to say, you stupid idiots. Uh, Nikki Cross. I don't know what she was saying. Whatever it is, got me excited though. And she was saying in Scottish, when Nikki Cross goes, Nikki Cross is the best. Billy says, Well, if you want to fight me, if you want your rematch, you need to fight another former SmackDown Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss. Oh, what a swerve that was. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. So this led to the first match. They also had a little, little shot of the bar set up. Here in Orlando, I forget what bar it was, but it was the same bar that Smojo was at, but we'll get into that later. So the first match of the night, 
match numero uno. Oh, my, my. Oh, hell yeah. Nikki Cross and Alexa, they don't need no party dress. Because, wow, this was an amazing match. Nikki Cross versus Alexa Bliss. Start off as your classic face versus face match. Very technical. Um, arm lock, wrist lock, to rolls. Then they would mirror that, the headlock takedown into, into the head into the head scissors. They really mirrored each other. Whoa, it was so good to see a technical match. Um, the rope running into the arm drag, the reverse of the DDT. And then, oh, it started to get ugly, baby. As Alexa Bliss went to, she raised her hand as if to slap Nikki Cross. She's like, you're going to slap me. So Nikki Cross just clotheslined her. Oh, now the two faces, they don't like each other now. All of a sudden, we went from a friendly competition to a little bit extra, little, little bit extra mustard. That was so good. Um, they go to the outside as they're brawling. Yeah, Bailey and Sasha. Sasha, who likes, who looks like a fifty-dollar hooker, and Bailey's just Bailey's just a Rom Romulan villain. But Sasha has to work on her outfits. Like, eventually someone's going to give her 50 bucks to, like, do something. But, yeah, they go to the outside. Sasha and Bailey talk some trash. Boom! Sasha and Bailey get blasted by Nikki. And Alexa, they go back in the ring. And now, now them, now them gloves come off, baby! It's time for a little fight! Oh, and this was so good. It's some striking. Alexa starts to kick right into the injured ribs of Nikki Cross. Again, Nikki Cross is wearing the rib tape. Rib tape doesn't do anything. Oh, and by the way, if you have a cracked rib, you're not doing anything. I've had... Well, I pulled intercostal muscles and bruised intercostal... I'll tell you what, I never felt such an intense pain with the exception of when I destroyed my knee. as when I twisted... And, and strain an intercostal muscle. Oh my God! Every breath you took started to hurt. Sneezing hurt. You tried to cough, and that hurt. You wanted to twist around in bed, and it, the seething pain. Oh, I don't even want to imagine what a crack rib felt like. And I've heard stories from MMA fighters. They're like, like, dude says, dude, I have a broken rib. If you have a broken rib, son, you ain't talking about no broken rib. You're like, oh. oh. So, yeah, so crack rib and, and rib tapes don't do anything because they're always on the, the belly anyway. And, oh, Nikki Cross was in a sports bra. I swore there was one shot. You could see Nikki Cross bare booty. I think that happened once in, when she was in NXT. She wasn't wearing a belt. She had a thong on. You could see the thong, folks. And you could see what was around the thong. That was good. But yeah, this was great. Um, Alexa then standing. Something. Oh, the standing chicken wing. Yeah, when you're, when you're standing, like, you literally... Try to hyper extend someone's elbow like that. Again, not very pleasant. Especially, again, anytime you stretch there and pull up, you pull intercostal muscles. So that hurts too. And then driving, grinding that elbow into the ribs. Oh, what a cheap, lazy move that is. It's effective though. Um, with Nikki Cross, make sure to come back with a jawbreaker. The cross chops to the throat, the headbutt, the headbutt to the gut. Alexa Bliss hits a Lucha Destroyer from the corner. Nikki does a Scorpion Death Drop. Eventually, Nikki Cross gets the roll-up win. I'll tell you what. Boom. After such a bad SmackDown a few weeks ago, this was amazing. This was a filet mignon match. Again, the WWE Women's Division is so deep when they really want to work. 
They're so good. Impact's still number two, though. Um, actually, they might be number three. WWE women, they're in. <sighs> they're all very good talents. It's very inconsistent writing and character work by the Raw women, though. Unfortunately, we'll see that later. But this match was amazing. Thank you, Nikki Cross. You you are truly. I don't, I don't know who's a greater gift gift from God. You are Alexa Bliss. And no, Nikki Cross is. Nikki Cross is utterly amazing. And then we have an amazing Firefly Funhouse. Just when you thought the first hour of the show couldn't get any better, you almost said, well, "What the? What's the second hour going to be like?" Second hour dipped down a little bit, but there were some highs and lows. We'll get into that. We had a Firefly Funhouse segment, a little bit of the swap match, the lost sheet. Say, hey, man. Oh, I have to be very careful when I do that. There's, there's some weird people here in Daytona Beach, man. Some weird people. Yeah, they, they come into places. Yeah, so we got a recap from Firefly Funhouse of the swap match. The Lost Sheep. Very quick recap. That was good. Then, we're all glad that you're our friend. And we have a friendship that will never, ever end. Firefly Funhouse Brave and Mr. Rogers showed up again. And the Lantern talks. Whoa. That was pretty cool. And then we have the Return of the Fiend. Oh, SummerSlam. That's good. The Fiend returns. Braun returns. As long as, he has, as long as there's nothing overly cinematic, I'll be happy. Then Matt Riddell. Bro. And that takes us to break. Matt Riddell comes back. And I felt bad for Tony Nese. This was actually the low point of the, of the night, I think. Uh, Matt Riddell, he has a great gut wrench suplex. Uh, Tony Nese has a moonsault and the body scissors. Uh, Matt Riddell reverses a sleeper hold into the bro Derek. However, Tony Nese reverses that into something else. Eventually, uh, there was an exploder, the knees, the, the exploder suplex, the elbows into the corner. And then finally, the bro Derek by Matt Riddell. Tony Nice had to do the job. Yeah, a few moves in at least. He didn't look a like a total wuss. Um, for the most part, this match. It's a ham sandwich. He knew you squash match. And then hey man. Um possum king. Baron Corbin. So, Riddell, um, of course, he calls out Baron Corbin. Corbin comes out. Baron says, Baron puts a bounty. I don't care. King's Ransom, it's not. It's a good old-fashioned bounty on the head of Matt Riddell. Tony Nese tries to cash in. No, he gets kicked in the face for his efforts. This is good. Lead up to stuff, and we see Miz and Morrison. They're funny. Talk about Naomi, or um, and then they talk about hashtags. The whole beef between Naomi and Booker T via Twitter and YouTube. Well, oh, I'm getting tired. I'm getting yawny. I had a bad week today. I had a decent day. Just bad week. Gotta get this week over, man. Yeah, just this week has to has to wind up. Um, JBL talks about bar fight. Yeah, I've been in bar fights before. He's like swords behind him. I don't have swords behind me. That's pretty weird. Although if I live the lifestyle of JBL, maybe I'll have some swords. I'll put them in a case though. It's not like behind me though. Uh, Miz. We, next we have Miz TV. Um, they come out. Oh. They were so funny. Uh, they, had, they had new four-star matches. It's called Four Peaks of Seth Rollins. Oh, wow, that made me laugh so much. 
Um, Sharon to say how bad something was. Naomi comes out. Um, I hate to say it. This was one of the best talk show segments I've seen in a while. Uh, Lacey Evans shows up. Naomi literally slaps the lipstick off her. That was pretty good. And Lacey Evans goes up, set, shoves the cameraman. It's all set up either for a match next week or leading up to SummerSlam, which is at the Performance Center because no more match in Boston. Put the kibosh on that. That's not happening, folks. Don't even worry about that. Then let's see here. Well, tag team recap next. He's going to get a, get a singles push. Um, Kofi is injured. I think he just wants some time off. They've been working really hard. So Big E, he's going to get his push. Uh, Xavier Woods still rehabilitating. I think a torn Achilles. I know that does take a while. I don't think it's... I do want to say it's a torn Achilles. I know you tear your Achilles and you're on the shelf for like at least a year. ACLs are about six to nine months, depending how bad it is. MCLs, LCLs, about two to three months. Again, depending on severity. Uh, PCL also tends to be about six to nine months. I think it was, and again, if you want to correct me, feel free to, but I think he tore his Achilles, which is a major thing. That's like a good year, year and a half uh, recover, uh, surgery, recovery, and rehab for that injury. Again, basketball players tearing Achilles, and like for the most part, they're done. So again, that's a big thing. So Big E's might get a solo push. AJ Styles come, comes out to be commentator for the next match. Winner gets a shot at him, I think, at uh, next week's SmackDown. You know, four away was Lince Dorado versus Drew Gulak versus Grand Metal League versus Shorty G. Oh my God. This was fun. It was so fast. I mean, at some points, you could barely, barely keep up with that. Metal League, again, he does the rope walk. Drew Gulak, again, he's wrestling Jakar. He knows how to work fast. I don't think Shorty G's ever had to work a fast Lucha style. But uh, Drew Drew Gulak ran right into a boot. Um, again, fast lucha action. Shorty G just eventually had a moonsault on everyone. At one time, uh, Gulak and Shorty G worked together against Lindsay and Dorado. Uh, yeah, Lindsay and Medley. I'm sorry. Uh, let Gulak. Again, the reverse. Of something which was fun, Dorado the the going for the triple moon salt. Uh, AJ, I don't know if I don't know if he might have wrestled in New Japan. He might have wrestled. I don't think there was Desperado. There was El Bandito though. I think if there was an El Dorado or El El Desperado, there might have been an El Desperado for a while with a uh, lost Ingar Nobles de Japan. I honestly forget. I know there's El Bandito. I forget if AJ was around when El Bandito was around. But AJ, it's the hell's called. I forget if it's Grand Metalik or Lindsay Dorado. They look like El, El Desperado. AJ Styles is good on commentary. Uh, Shorty G had exploded suplex to both luchadors. Then Shorty G hit the ankle lock onto Drew Gulak. That was broken up by a splash by Lindsay Dorado, I think. Um, Dorado did something off the ropes. There was a tease tower of doom spot, but Shorty G hit an amazing, like, backs, like German back, belly to back suplex driver. That looked awesome. Uh, but eventually, Grand Metal Leak actually got the pin, which was impressive. So, Grand Metal Leak is going to face AJ Styles next week. I have no problem with that because I think AJ Styles can really elevate Grand Metal League, and Grand Metal League might push AJ a little bit. That match, I'll tell you what, it was fun luchador action, especially with, with the terrible news that Triple Mania has been postponed. Jeez. That sucks. Stupid coronavirus. This overall, though, was a good surf and turf match.
Then we had a little bit of um, AJ Styles. He's like, yeah, you, you, I'll shake your hand. You're not going to shake my hand? I'll slap you. It's slapped around by Metal Leak. Yep. Saw that happening. There was the... And there was a little recap about Otis and Mandy. I thought Mandy was on that boat party where everyone got coronavirus. That's what I heard via internet rumors. Then Shinsuke and, Nak Shinsuke and Nakamura and Cesaro cut a little promo. That's good to hear. Then we have our main event of the evening. We have our bar fight. Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. And whoa. That... that Bartender needs to learn how to do a towel flip, man. Because he tried like the towel flip and like fell on his chest, and he's like, "Oh, oh, fix that." No, <laughs> one sl slick motion. Obviously, the performance enhancement talent need to learn and practice their trade, and obviously other trades like bartending. Uh, let's see, here. <laughs> Jeff Hardy <laughs> mentioned how WWE. Deleted! Delete! 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 Deleted! Matt Hardy from the WWE is deleted! Delete! 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 Obsolete! Too sweet. Suck it. No, delete! Delete everything! Delete! Delete! Delete Matt Hardy from WWE. Delete him some more. Can't be deleted enough. Tranquilo. Um, then we have a bar fight, and I call it as every good bar fight goes. No, you can't have a good bar fight or a good initiation of a bar fight without someone throwing a beer or drink into the other person's face. Classic bar fight. Uh, from there, it was a body drop onto the bar. Seamus drop Jeff Hardy on the bar. Down the bar he goes. Because Seamus, he's just not the bar. He is the bar. Bar, bar, bar. And sets the bar. That was fun. Uh, Jeff Hardy was flying off the bar top. Um, and this was the same same bar as Samoa Joe cutting us one promo. Yeah, well, not with this. This is sort of, but Samoa Joe had a beer. I might red wine earlier in pizza. I just needed some hydration food and a little sugar. I'm going to need some water soon, too. Hydration. That's good. Uh, and of course, the other, the second aspect of a bar fight, it has to take place in a men's bathroom. Jeff Hardy goes in the urinal, Seamus goes in the stall. Exactly what you expected. A Jeff eventually does find a ladder. It's only Jeff comes. Now, wait a second. Seamus takes off his belt. He bro kicks something. Well, he bro kicks into a drum. The bartender tries to get involved. Yeah, bartender gets gets tossed through. A bro kick, yeah. Through the drum. The bartender goes through a table. Then eventually Seamus does knock Matt Hardy down. He puts his hat on top of him. Then Booey, 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 booey. He becomes Brother Nero. Yes, Brother Nero. He becomes obsolete. 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 They do not delete. Brother Nero. Yes, Brother Nero. Um, from there, Seamus eats a senton bomb. And I'll tell you what, that's on a concrete floor too. Ouch. There is no gift for that. How Jeff Hardy walks away, how Jeff Hardy has any spinal column left is amazing. And why Seamus' ribs weren't compacted, who knows. But this was fun. Jeff Hardy wins. Hopefully finishes this. But I'll tell you what, this was a good good match. This was a good cheeseburger match. And wow. Was this SmackDown ever better? Either Bruce Prichard did very little writing or he wrote certain segments and they gave the reins to someone else who, who actually thought they knew what wrestling was. But I'll tell you what. WWE is giving an impact, giving... As, as they're saying, I'm the man. 
So I'll tell you what, this was a good, fun surf and turf raw. Or surf and turf smackdown.